Morning, welcome to the Sunday Supplement. Coming up, Pep makes his mark. He's axed Joe Hart for his first game in charge at Manchester City. The champions, Leicester, they began their title defence to the defeat at managerless Hull. And timing's everything. What's happened to the revolution at Newcastle United? Sean Custis, head of sport at The Sun, he'll tell us more. So will Andy Dunn, he's the chief sports columnist at The Sunday Mirror. And Henry Winter is the chief football writer at The Times. Morning to you guys, good to see you as ever. Don't forget, you can tweet the show at Sunday Sup. The cleanest will appear on your screen over the next 90 minutes. OK, let's have a look at some of the papers this morning. This is the Sunday People. Pressure's on Leicester already. They lose at Hull yesterday from champs to chumps. First game of the season, a defeat for them at managerless Hull. Pressure on this man as well, Joe Hart. Joe, no, Joe, no. Didn't play yesterday for Manchester City. Willie Caballero instead. Andy Dunn was at City. We'll talk to him more about that in a moment. The Sunday Mirror, if you can find it, Inside there, well, with all their Olympics coverage on the back page this morning, heartbroken. This is Pep axing Joe Hart and welcome to Hull. It was Hull yesterday for the champions. Leicester, Pep feeling the heat, but he did get off to a winning start yesterday. 2 1, Paddy McNair's own goal helped them out right at the end. Back page of the Sun, Pep's war with City. The City Manchester City board over the selection dilemma. He was ruthless yesterday, though, Pep Guardiola, by making that decision. It's also on the back page of the Mail on Sunday. Hart axed. But Pep got lucky yesterday at the Etihad. A winning start for him. We'll talk about that in a moment. But um, first, we should just alert you to a, um, a break from the past, really, and um, a move into the future on the Sunday supplement. Because um, after reading Henry Winter's column this week, uh, we're no longer going to blast anyone, shout anyone, be furious with anyone. <laughs> you, um, you will, then. We're going to take a more measured, <laughs> uh, cerebral approach to, uh, to affairs on this table because you've had enough of everyone blasting Wayne Rooney and... <laughs> Blasting Gary Neville or blasting the England team or blasting Roy Hodgson, haven't you? It's after having spent a summer with you in France. <laughs> I just thought we might want to bring a little bit more intellectual debate in. Yeah, OK. Well, we're going to give it a go this morning. Right, see, how we, see how we can get I'll on. Give you it can mark minutes. us out of ten at home. We mark the players. <laughs> um, you can mark us out of ten at home. At Sunday Sup, you can tweet us during the programme. Let's talk to Andy now about City because you were there yesterday. You wrote about Joe Hart this morning and the... And the well, it was bold or brave or ruthless decision by, by Guardiola. But what does the future hold... For, uh, for Joe Hart now. Well, you mentioned the word ruthless um, at the top of the show, and, you know, it, it's been bandied around an awful lot today, but that's what it was, because the ramifications of that decision, you know, are huge, really. I mean, in the press conference after the match, he was pressed, as you can imagine, Guardiola, on why he dropped Joe Hart. He wasn't particularly committed. He just basically said that Caballero had had a good pre-season, had worked more with the players than Joe Hart, because he was back earlier than Joe Hart. And then when asked where, where their would come in for the Champions League game this week, the Champions League playoff game in Bucharest, again, he was very non-committal, very, very non-committal. And the impression you get um, from that decision that he's made is that basically Hart has no future under Guardiola there. That is, that is, it's as serious as that, because if we assume, if we assume that the reason why he's dropped is primarily because of his lack of footballing skills, because he can't join in from the back, he can't start play, his distribution isn't great, then that's not going to change at the age of 29. You know, he's not exactly an old dog, but there's some new tricks you can't learn. You can't turn mm. a keeper like Joe Hart into a play-starting sweeper-keeper. So then how does he have a future at Man City under Guardiola? Also, you know, it's a big blow to his pride, because, you know, Caballero, when he's played previously in the Premier League, hasn't exactly, you know, been... <laughs> Hasn't exactly shone, hasn't exactly been outstanding. He was okay yesterday, nothing special. He did special. look like Manuel you know, Neuer yesterday on the edge of his area. Well, he did, but his first, his first, of course, his first pass was straight to Duncan Watmore with, with, with unerring ease. So uh, that wasn't great. So there's no way, really, Caballero can be the long-term replacement for Hart. So I would assume Hart will still be there unless Guardiola can get a replacement, whether it's Ter Stegen, in before the transfer window ends. But again, and it, it goes on, and Hart... Sam Aldice was there yesterday. What does, what does, you know, and I'm sure Sam isn't particularly fussed about his keeper playing ticket tacker, mm. but he's still not going, he's still going to want his keeper to be playing first team football week in and week out. So it was a big day for Joe, a big, a serious day for, for Joe Hart, and, and no wonder he looked, you know, understandably. He had a face like thunder all day. But you mentioned, I think you mentioned mm. in your piece that they didn't look at each other when, when Joe Hart came out, when it took no, his place on the bench. He came out, took his place on the bench, didn't, you know, didn't exchange a glance. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily expect them to. But then at the end of the game as well, Joe came down the steps past Pep, who was, who was uh, um, saluting the victory, went onto the pitch, but again, you know, bear, well, you know, certainly didn't smile. Why would you smile when you've just been dropped? You're just a serious professional. But I think he knows that, that, is a, that that's just not a, a decision he's made after 
weighing them up in pre-season. Mm. It's not just that. I mean, also Guardiola must have seen Euro 2016 and the poor tournament Hart had. That is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a very big decision with a lot of ramifications for Joe Hart, for City and for England. It's not black or white though, is it, Henry? There's got to be somewhere... Something in the Absolutely, <laughs> you're, you're completely right. You, you know, and I and I admire your new approach to actually uh, appreciating the football is about the shade as well as the. That's enough about Henry's. And I tell you what, <laughs> and if you if you actually look, I mean, two things strike me about the Hart situation is first, let's not underestimate Joe Hart. You know, he's been here before with Manuel Pellegrini after the Chelsea game. He went back, he started. Um, he's, it was less about footwork and more about his speed off the line. And he improves and he fought back. He's, he's a tough individual. He's not stupid. He's a professional. He will work on this. OK, he's not going to become Manuel Neuer or even Franz Beckenbauer overnight. But, you know, he will work on this. So let's not write Joe Hart off. The other thing is that Guardiola, who, look, he's a fantastic manager, completely ruthless mm. in, in this mm. case, and he has a right to be because it's this team and he's, he's imposing himself on And he's got the CV to back that up. But this is also English football. This is not... Um, particularly Spanish football, where a lot of the keepers have time to control the ball, whether it's Ter Stegen, whether it's Bravo, who, who City are now being linked with. Um, they get closed down very quickly in this league. So, you know, it's not easy to play the ball out from the back. But, you know, the other good thing from, for, well, the other thing from England's perspective, and Sam Allardyce will be looking at this, and it's unfortunate Jack Button had a little, little injury at the start of the season, and he recovered from the injury last season, is that England do now have goalkeepers who can put pressure on Joe Hart, which wasn't the case for a while. Fraser Forster is a good goalkeeper, but Jack Butland clearly will represent England for a long time in the future. Fraser Forster is not a footballing keeper, though, no, is he? No, either. I think it's a message to the board from Guardiola, as Mike McGraw makes the point in there, that actually the, the briefings from City were, we love Joe Hart, everything's fine, you know, we don't want to mm. buy anybody else and that, and clearly Guardiola is saying, well, you might not, but I certainly do. And this thing about Hart and distribution, you can go right back, 2010, when we watched mm. uh, at the World Cup, Fabio Capello having a go at him against, what was it, the Platinum Miners 11 yes. or something, when he was kicking out of play. It's been a long-running theme, I think, Hart's distribution, and he hasn't really learned it. You, you say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but they've sort of been trying to teach him for, for about six years, and it's not got through. You can also remember Mancini having a go at him, was it? R Real Madrid, mm. away, again, not very happy. And Hart reacts... Hart doesn't react well to these things. He actually reacts badly. I think they want to see him react well and say, OK, I get it, I see what you're saying. But he doesn't. He, he tends to go into the sulks, and I think Guardiola doesn't put up very well with somebody who goes straight into a sulk. He, he, he didn't know the Chelsea mistakes. I mean, he went and studied. He, he didn't sulk there, however annoyed he was. But, you know, the most important thing a goalkeeper has to do is keep the ball out of the net. And I think we've seen in, in a string of Champions League games, against Lewandowski, against uh, Messi. He is a fantastic shot-stopping goalkeeper. Now, there are issues with him. We've seen it with England, the vulnerability down to, yeah. to, to, to the left-hand side. He's clearly got to work on things, but let's not write Joe Hart off now. Yeah. Well, I think we're writing him off in terms of... No. You know, I, just, I just think the match between him and Guardiola already doesn't look a good one. Uh, I mean, instead of not writing him off, I think he's a very, very good keeper. Um, I think it was unfortunate what happened at Euro 2016. I think he'll get over that. I think he'll, he'll still be England's keeper. But... If he wants regular first team football, I just don't see how it can happen. And, Andy, what I do was, not see it. What was the mood around the stadium? Because it's, it's such a big decision. He's such a he's a fan's yeah. favourite, isn't he? He's an English player. He's seen as a Manchester City player yes. through and through. They're all the golden gloves that he's won throughout his career. But then there's the Guardiola effect. What was the, because in the past under Pellegrini or Mancini, make that decision, all of a sudden there'd be a lot of nervousness yeah. around the stadium. But what was it like yesterday when that decision? was formally announced, and then also right at the beginning of the game. Well, well, the mood clearly w was buoyant in terms of welcoming one of the coaching greats to, to the Etihad formally for his first day at the office. That was the mood, you know, no matter what decisions he made. And don't forget, not only Hart, Yaya Torre wasn't in the squad, was not mm. in the squad. You know, so what, what Guardiola's done, you talk about what the mood was amongst the City fans, it was buoyant, despite the fact the two players, Torre and Hart, who have been inextricably linked with all their success over the last, you know, five, six, six, six years. They were, they, were, they were, you know, while Hart was on the bench, which was almost more ignominious than actually Torrey not even being in the, in the match day squad, which is incredible, really. But the, the, <coughs> said that didn't matter, because the mood was, Pep's here. We've got Pep Guardiola, one of the coaching greats here. It was one of optimism. They were, and then, of course, City actually started well. They didn't actually play very well over the entire piece, but the first 10, 15 minutes, they started well. They started, you know, with, with, with sort of a demonic zeal, and that's what the, the, the fans expected from a Guardiola team, chasing everything, 80% possession in the first 
you know, half an hour, and they love that. So, so that that over over from a fan's point of view, the heart thing didn't really. Well, of course, it registered, but that wasn't an issue. You know, it was mm. more welcoming Guardiola to but the Etihad. Are, are, you, are you convinced by um, by the appointment of Guardiola, Sean? And the, the oh, right, you, can't, <laughs> you can't not be impressed by Guardiola being the manager, of course, but he is showing that he's very much his own man. Now, previously, the board, when they give a sort of briefing or indicate how they're thinking, that tends to be how it goes. But what Andy's saying, like, people who are connected with Yaya Toure believe he's been given yeah. assurance. They're mm -hmm. getting them from the board. He's been assured he's going to be all right. Wilfred Boney was assured he was going to be all right not that long ago as well. And now you've got... You, and you had publicly a bit of a statement from Guardiola saying, yeah, Hart, to start, will be my number one. He was sort of supporting the ball. But actually, he's gone and said, I am my own man. Whatever you think, I'm mates with Cheeky and all and Ferran and, and all that. He's clearly saying, I will do it my way. I think it's very interesting. It would have been very easy yesterday, wouldn't it, to say, OK, I'll start with Joe Hart and a bit of Yaya Toure and then I'll make my changes. But he hasn't done that. He's done it straight away and everyone's gone, whoa, hang on, this is going to be very different. And even though, actually, in press conferences, I don't think he's, it comes over particularly as that exciting, what he does sort of with his, with his actual actions is really, really interesting. With our new approach, though, Henry, you won't, you, you won't be happy. I mean, it's taken, <laughs> Let's it's go in a minute. <laughs> I know, I, this is the <laughs> I, love, but, I love the new union. But it has, it has taken up because the, the agenda before the game was the, the great pep, the great team, we can't wait for them, for, yeah. for them to start wowing us and we'll be drooling and, you know, it, it, the great Guardiola. But all of a sudden, the news agenda is all about Joe Hart. No, I think the, the straightforward agenda is actually merging of the two. Um, again, seeing the nuances, uh, you know, behind the headlines, Neil, which is the fact that you've got. <laughs> you, I, just, I just read Neil, the headlines. And... <laughs> you do. You you love the headlines. Read the copy, Neil. So what what is interesting is that we we have got and we should be impressed by having one of the, the greatest coaches, not of the modern era, but ever in football, coming to us. And you know, we should listen to him. We should learn from him. And it, I think it's just embellishing Sean's point is that it's not just the impact on us the fact that he's dropped Joe Hart, the message it sends out to the other players. You know, I mean, Raheem played well yesterday, I thought, but he's going to have to raise his game. Everyone in that team's going to have to raise the game because they know how ruthless Guardiola is now. Mm. Signed John Stones um, in the yeah. week, Andy. Played, played yesterday alongside oh, yeah. uh, Collarob, didn't he, in the centre of, of City's defence. How, how did he do? It big, big money for him. He did look comfortable, did he look He, he did OK. I mean, I mean, as you can imagine, Sunderland, you know, weren't exactly a, a, a major threatening attacking force, and he did OK. Um, you say he was next to collar off, I mean, that, you know, which is ironic, not a regular centre-half, and considering how much money they've spent on centre-halves over the last few years, maybe that's another one of Sean's messages to the board <laughs> from, um, from Guardiola. But he did OK. He, 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 he looked comfortable, but he was, for the goal, I thought he was a little bit culpable. You know, he basically went out and, and rushed out to, to try and take the ball off Janisai and basically left that area in the centre, centre just on, on the edge of the penalty area, free, and Defoe scored. I thought it was a little bit rash. He did all right. He looks, you know, and Guardiola was very complimentary about him and he hasn't had long. Talking of which, you know, he might be good for English players because Sterling, mm. Henry mentioned him, he was outstanding yesterday, Sterling. And in the press conference, you're right, Guardiola doesn't give much away. But when he was asked about Raheem Sterling, um, he absolutely, his mood changed. His mood changed and, 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 and he, he was so gushing about him. Mm. In fact, the questioner um, um, asked, the, asked the question and said, Sterling um, played very well today, Pep. Pep Mead said, what's your name? It was actually Steve Bates who, who was here last week. What's your name? He said, right, Steve, I agree with you. He was, he was <laughs> fantastic. He says he, he's, he's listened to everything I say. He can play right, he can play left. Yeah, and, and he clearly sees a huge future for Raheem Sterling under him. That contrast that with, 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 with the hard thing. So it was very, very intriguing. But as Henry says, it is about nuances. And, and it can be. But I haven't said that. The reason this why. This is where the conversation listen, goes right above me, I'm afraid. Listen, listen, the reason why. The reason why these are headlines, the reason why Hart sets the agenda is because actually, in terms of nuances, they were so slight. Because this was a city performance that we've seen before yeah. with an awful lot of possession. You know, an awful lot of possession, dominating at home and sometimes not being able to kill sides off. Yeah. So, really, that, as a story, that's way below. Joe mm. Hart getting... Still second in the Premier League table, they're in trouble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I um, want to touch on Sunderland as well, because David Moyes is in there. Of course, he just made a couple of signings in the week from and going back to Manchester United for a couple of players yeah. that he knows well. But um, did you see enough in the performance yesterday? Or the, well, the approach Defoe's still sharp, yes. there's no doubt about that. You know, he had two chances maybe, stuck one away, which is good. I thought the, the spirit, the attitude looked really good. Moyes is clearly... 
in a difficult position, even worse than when he came into Man United for the amount of time he's got to sign players. There isn't a lot of money available. He, he actually knows that deep down. He's not going to go, be able to go out and spend 20 million, 25 million, maybe on a striker or a new midfield player. I think it's going to be really tough for him, but I thought. I thought they looked better than I expected, they, they, to be they honest. Were, they were OK. I mean, I mean they, they were, as you can imagine, you know, tenacious. They defended very well. Keep, if, if they can keep hold of Kone, I mean, oh. that's absolutely key. Oh, no. it, all the vibes are that they probably won't be able to. Uh, if they could, that would be absolutely vital. I thought the centre-halves were immense for Sunderland yesterday. Um, and they defended very, very well. Ironically, the, 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 the actual the winning goal came because he, he, he took Defoe off. Haven't scored. Yeah. Poor Paddy McNair to try and defend that one more. <laughs> of course, the uh, OGs, yeah. which you know can often happen. Yeah. Okay. Defeat for Sunderland in David Moyes' first game. No Joe Hart for City yesterday. That's I meant to mention earlier. Well done to Paul Joyce for nailing that story in the Express yesterday morning. Um, okay. Next up, the champions, Leicester. They're in action at Hull yesterday. 